Zehn Minuten Bühne frei für Ananya Singh. Thank you. I, I think the first question is, um, because I'm talking about the dance of Electron, uh, what is dancing? Do you guys know what is dancing? You don't answer this by a statement. You just say, should I show you? <laughs> okay, so, um, now, but there is a nerd way of doing this, and there's a mathematics of dancing. You just have to think of a shape, okay, and you think of a body part, just attach them, and it becomes a dance move, okay? Next time you go to a party, remember this, okay? All of you who are standing in the corners, I'm seeing you, okay? So you have to apply this formula, which is a shape plus body part gives you a move, okay? But then you need some rhythm here and there, and that would be a dancing. Let's have an example, okay? So think triangle, okay, and shoulder. So you just go one, two, three, That's a dance, right? <laughs> <laughs> Now, you know the secret, you have to do it. <laughs> I will give you a five, six, seven, eight, and you will do it. Yeah, ready? You have a shape in your brain. Okay, think of a body part. Even eyeball works. Circle, okay? And a five, six, seven, eight, and a hey. And a hey, you gotta dance, and a hey, 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 okay. <laughs> you have to come to my dance classes, okay. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm not joking. This simple formula can be applied, and the dancing can just become beautiful. Think of a point, line, a line, touch, circle, circle, point, circle. Come back, okay? Think of a shape, square. <laughs> Go around, and that's dancing, okay? I know you can practice this at home, and you can try even more, and you will become a great dancer, I know. But it's not today about us. We are thinking about electrons. If you know what is an electron, just shout, Woo! okay? <laughs> just that much, okay, let, let me give you one more try. Do you know an electron? Okay, then I won't explain what it is. <laughs> so, we are here to watch the dance of Electron. Electron is always bouncing. Even at zero Kelvin, where there's no temperature at all, it is always moving. But at room temperature, it's a bit aggressive, okay? So, when it's dancing, it's too much hot. That's Electron at room temperature, okay? But you try, you take the temperature down, you go around three or four Kelvin, Electron goes into itself, okay? Electron becomes more than a particle, it becomes a wave. <laughs> it moves around in a graceful manner, okay? Not only that, it becomes quantized, okay? So it's not just moving always, it will stop. Whoop! That's one thing, but when you go down to low temperatures, we want to do, as a scientist, solve some kind of a problem. But the pro and the problem is, we have resistance. Electrons wants to dance, but somehow defects, or it can have dislocations, or something like that, and then it cannot do what it wants. For example, this is the biggest problem we have at the moment, energy. You want to solve this problem of energy, where it's coming from? Resistance. Electron wants to go there, but something is in between, and then comes back. So it's like, hey, ha, boom, and it doesn't go. It goes away, okay? So we want to solve this problem, and at one point, there was a big promise of this, that you can solve this problem by superconductivity, okay? So the conduction just increases so much that It does not care about the fact that there's something and it just goes through it. The way it does it, electron actually falls in love <laughs> with another electron. Oh. Hashtag pride. <laughs> and they are called Cooper pairs, okay? 
Now, I would have shown you that dance, but I'm still single. <laughs> but Cooper Bear can solve that problem, and the scientists around the world are going for it. We are looking for a superconductor which can come to room temperature and solve this problem. Okay? That's one side of the equation. But what are we doing? We are also trying to solve this problem in our lab by looking at it a bit differently. Okay? So that's what superconductivity wants to do. But let's talk about electrons are everywhere. So which electrons we are going to choose to solve the problem of resistance? So the one which we get, go for is you have seen in your pencils. Graphite, you keep peeling it, it becomes graphene. Okay? And once it becomes graphene, it is very, very strong. It's stronger than the steel. It's very flexible. And one more thing about this, electrons has no mass when it's in graphene. Now, how is this possible? I, even I don't know, OK? <laughs> like, but if you want to dance, it's really good if you're strong and if you're flexible and you're light on your feet, OK? You can dance much, much better. So we chose graphene. Now we have to play music. The way we play music is we apply electric field. Whenever you apply an electric field, this electron just tries to move in that direction. So for example, I apply electric field in that direction, electron is just moving, okay? If I apply electric field and magnetic field, if I use this music, what happens is electron start moving in a circle, okay? Now that's something which baffled scientists in the beginning, but now we can use this fact to solve this problem of resistance. How we will try to do that is we apply a magnetic field right over there, and the electrons at the center start moving in circle, okay? But what happens to the electrons which are right at the edge? That's the question which we are trying to see. So right at the center, they are just moving around. There is no conductivity. It's insulator, okay, because we want electron to go. But what happens, right at the edge, becomes super smart. It is coming, moving around, and it sees that, and like, oh, I don't want to talk to you, comes around, and then comes around. And this is the way electrons which are moving at the edges has no resistance at all. And that is very fascinating, because you have a system, a material, can only be insulator, or can only be conductor, but there are materials, when you apply magnetic field, they can be insulator and a conductor at the same time. And this zero resistance is something which we are trying to look at. Now, what we are doing in our lab is something even more bizarre. So, for a dancer to dance, you need a stable stage, right? But what we are doing is graphene is there, right at the hexagon ones are the graphene, and we use a new substrate called STO. Now, this, and that's graphene, there's a bunch of cool ways to show this in a science seminar, but you are, oi, oh, it going to go, okay, don't look at it, look at me. <laughs> yes. So, it's like you are having a stage where the stage is dancing itself, okay? And what happens when the stage dances itself? Not only that, what it does is turns up the volume. There are two electrons. They will not be able to talk to each other, okay? And this one electron is right now on its own. Now, it will have the moment to do meditation. And when you do meditation, you go within yourself, and you realize that not only you have waves, you have an intrinsic property called a spin. That's the fancy name which none of us in physics community understand, but we talk about it, okay? It's like soul, yeah? We talk about it, but do we understand it? And when you see, electron finds that out, but we can experimentally see that, that electron of one kind of spin starts moving in one direction, and the other kind of spin starts moving in the other direction. And that's where we can use this to solve the problem of resistance. Not only that, these kinds are very emotionally stable, high EQ, okay? The way they do it is they are not affected by any kind of noise which is in your system. Now, what we are also trying to achieve in our lab is to get a superconductor next to it. You remember the couple? The couple dances, 
and then a single electron will come. What will happen, what kind of dance it will give it to us, we have no idea, but this is something which we will find out using your tax money. <laughs> and eventually, when we found out, not only that, we will see something very artistic, wonderful dance, but also it will solve wonderful problems which we have at the moment in the world. So with this, I want to say a last statement. This whole world at the moment needs one thing, that arts should meet science. Thank you. So this is what you are doing in Aachen. Yes. <laughs> I'm uh, very excited. Which kind of questions are coming now? Okay. Die erste Frage an Ananya. I'm not nervous. Vielleicht auf Englisch oder auf physikalisch. <lacht> uh, hier drüben, ich werde geblendet. Tut mir leid, bitte. Oh, electron moves really fast. That's why I use the word aggressive. So, um, but aggression, yeah. No, when it goes down, it's still moving really fast at the speed of 10 raised to the power 6. Oh, sorry. So the question he's asking is, when you go down in temperature, does the speed of the electron also goes down? Is that it, right? So actually, that's not. So what is happening is it's moving very aggressively, and at high temperatures, the thermal energy is making it move a certain way. But as you go down, you take away the energy scale of temperature, and then it moves with its own speed. And that speed itself is just 100 times smaller than the speed of light in graphene. So it's moving really, really fast, around 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 6 meter per second, even at low temperatures. Yeah. <laughs> So, die zweite Frage an Ananya, bitte. So yeah, electron have a mass. The so question. there was a Millikan drop experiment which the was question. done. Oh yes, oh, thank you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I need that you repeat that to understand the question. Yes, yes. So the question which is asked is like, does electron have a mass in general? Uh, and what happens, this is to when it goes to different materials. Am I correct? So electron's mass is very, very low. It's around 10 to the power minus 31 kg. Um, but the very moment electron actually goes into a system, it changes its mass. That's why it's called effective mass. It's like if you take a whole big log uh, of wood and you try to move it in the ground, it's very tough, okay? But use water, super easy, okay? So the effective mass changes, and that effective mass, when electron goes into the graphene, it becomes zero. What does zero mean? Uh, uh, we can talk about it. <laughs> Die letzte Frage an den letzten Slammer der heutigen Reihenfolge. Kommt später. Fantastisch. Ananya Singh. Thank you.